Darrell Jazz Johnson, Gospel Herald, here with ESPN's uh, friend for Schiller Friend. How are you doing today? Outstanding. This is uh, there's always a great night in the basketball world. So, so you're you're one of the um, among many titles that you wear at ESPN. You're the international expert. So, so tell us a little bit about the international players uh, that are entering the draft and, and what type of uh, NBA players they'll, they'll be. Well, first of all, this past season, there were 100-plus international players in the league. That's among 450 players. And uh, 58 in the playoffs. So that's, uh, you know, the in international game has really gotten smaller uh, in terms of the globe being smaller. And we see all these great players from all over the world. So in this draft, you got uh, particularly three international players that are going to be in the top ten for sure. And uh, you start off with Chris Porzingis from Latvia, seven foot two, played in Spain this year. Mario Hazonia, a Croatian player who also played in Spain. And then I think a guy that a lot of basketball fans around the world have heard of, uh, Emmanuel Moutier, young man from the Congo who grew up in Dallas, who spent this past year, as many people know, in Guangdong playing for the Southern Tigers. Although he only played 12 games, uh, shortened because of an injury. But uh, outstanding point guard, prospect. All three of those guys will be gone in the top 10 picks. So this is a draft that, that has a lot of talent, on at least on paper. But, but so who do you think... Three years from now, who do you think will be the star of this draft class? Ooh, it's a good question because you're right. I think especially from one to eight, you could really mix and match all these guys. I and mean, everybody loves the two big guys, Okafor and Towns, for obvious reasons. But you're right about the fact that uh, we're not exactly sure who's going to end up being the best player. Could be a guy like Justice Winslow. You know, it could be Porzingis, who we've never seen a guy seven foot two with the shooting range that he has and the athleticism. Uh, so it's really tricky. Now, D'Angelo Russell from Ohio State might be the most talented, gifted player in the draft, although he's only six foot four. but he's got a lot of Steph Curry in him because he can shoot the ball from deep, not quite as good as Steph, but he can certainly pass the ball as good as some of the best point guards in the NBA. So that's a guy that we may be looking back on in three, four, five years and saying he's a superstar, and we kind of knew it when he was playing at Ohio State, and we thought we knew it on draft night. Who are some potential sleepers, people that, that no one is really talking about that, that might be uh, a mid-first round to late first round pick that has star potential? It's a good question, you know, because normally uh, you don't see the stars come out of the late first round or early second, but we know, uh, history tells us that there will be somebody whether it's a Chandler Parsons who got drafted at 38, whether it's a Wesley Matthews who didn't get drafted and has ended up having a great career. But, you know, I'll, I'll start on the international side first. A guy by the name of uh, Billy Hernan Gomez from Spain, seven feet tall, 20 years old. He'll get drafted in the late first round tonight, maybe early second, and he'll probably stay in Spain for a couple of years before we see him come over. So he jumps out at me. I think DeLon Wright from Utah. An outstanding six-foot-five point guard, whose brother Darrell plays in the NBA. Uh, although he's not a sleeper necessarily, because he's not going to be picked in the first part of the first round, he could have a bigger impact than people realize. And then Jaron Grant from Notre Dame, uh, you know, the son of uh, Harvey Grant and the, and the nephew of Horace Grant. Uh, great bloodlines, had a great senior year at Notre Dame. Big point guard who really sees the court. Final question: With the first eight or so picks that, that we've already talked about. What player matches up perfectly with a team that could potentially draft him? Well, another great question because in this draft, one of the things that you really like is that there are different types and styles of players. So, you know, for example, Carl Towns probably could fit anywhere. But if you look at what Minnesota has with Wiggins, Ricky Rubio, and then a healthy uh, Pekovic, uh, Nikola Pekovic, who's a big bruiser, Carl Towns might be perfect with him because Pekovic could be his bodyguard while Towns scores inside, shoots the three and block shot. So I love Towns for Minnesota. Um, I like D'Angelo Russell uh, third because Philly, although they've been much maligned, they could really use a point guard and playmaker like him. He would be a great fit at three. Don't ask me to pick. Don't ask me to tell you who the Knicks are taking. I grew up a Knicks fan and whom not, no matter who they take, the fans are probably going to boo them. And and that and that's you're you're probably right. I I I think the only player 
if Okafor was to slip to four, then the fans would probably cheer for the first time in years. But that's more than likely not going to happen. Have a great story, wouldn't we? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and your knowledge. Appreciate it. Thank you.